Welcome to the 311 Griffin YouTube channel. We are using DCS today to talk about the basics of helicopter flight controls. Um, helicopter flight controls are a little bit complicated, but once you kind of understand what parts are there and what they do, um, it's kind of fascinating actually. And DCS is detailed enough that we can kind of look at how it works in the game and understand how it works in real life. So, let's get into it. Okay, so here in the cockpit we've got a few different controls and uh, they're similar to airplane controls if you're familiar with those. We have uh, the stick which is called the cyclic or the cyclic depending on who you ask. Um, I call it cyclic. So, um, And this controls roll. It's a little sluggish at the moment. I'm assuming because the helicopter is not turning on or isn't on. But <clears throat> you've got the roll and you've got the pitch. So just like in an airplane uh, pitch forward, nose down, cyclic pitch back, nose up, cyclic pitch rolled right and left. Okay, and just like an airplane, we've got rudder pedals down there, that say Bell Huey on them. And this isn't exactly true as we'll find out, but you know, if you want the nose of the aircraft to yaw, to the right you do something like this and if you want it to yaw to the left you do something like this so left and right yaw motion um, now um, the truth is and this is true in an airplane too you may have situations where you have rudder input for yaw control when you're you're just trying to fly straight okay so here this stick is the collective and this is also a pitch controller but it controls the pitch of all the blades this controls the pitch of the blades in a particular well it controls the pitch of the blades as they go around the arc the rotor arc but um, it changes pitch as it goes around so the blades um, the, the blades will change pitch as they go around the arc based on how you have this set where the pitch when with the collective it changes the pitch of all the blades and then uh, there's a twist throttle on there and it's not twisting right now but this here is the twist throttle and uh, and that that sets the throttle of the engine it's it's kind of a set it and forget it in this helicopter so uh, so there you go so basically what we've got is um, a swash plate down here and uh, and this this thing can um, can raise and lower and you see some linkages down here these are are um, linkages for the cyclic and it changes that swash plate and then the collective we can we can raise and lower the collective uh, with these links as well so this this link is changing the collective and there's uh, three around the outside that change the cyclic and they all change um, the they change the swash plate basically um, so we've got an anti-drive link here we've got a scissor here and, it, and it's basically like some some metal pieces that can scissor um, with each other and we have control tubes here we have a damper here and then right here we've got pitch change links uh, this is the pitch horn see it's connected to the rotor blade and the rotor blade has to be able to um, pitch or, or rotate around this uh, axis and it has to be able to flap as well. So pitch change link, pitch horn, these are pitch change levers, you got two of them up here, and uh, and then stabilizer bar out here which we won't talk about too much. Now this is a two, two blade rotor configuration obviously, but um, let me see, I want to see if I can if I can get a view of the pilot at the same time which we won't be able to see really well but okay so as I push the cyclic forward you can see this uh, this rod push up and we're changing that swash plate now since the the helicopter is not on we can't see it right now um, but it, it pushes as the blades will rotate around this swash plate it'll actually push on these control tubes it'll push on the um, the 
pitch change levers which will pull up on the pitch change link the pitch horn and that will rotate that'll cause this blade to pitch at a certain point in the path of rotation now what's what's interesting and you can see those stabilizers push down the, and this is this is a better view because I'm rolling and due to the position that the blades are in right now that's why you're seeing changes now <clears throat> so you can see that like when I roll right this um, this uh, connecting rod pulls down the one on the other side pushes up and that changes the angle of the swash plate that pulls down on this anti-drive link and pushes up on the other anti-drive link link the scissors actually operate and it pulls it pushes up on this other uh, control tube pulls down on this control tube which pulls down on this uh, pitch change lever pushes up on that pitch change lever and does you know obviously it moves those um, pitch change links and pitch horns respectively so you can see the pitch of the helicopter blade is actually changing as we do that okay now if we pull up on the collective we'll see the same thing but it does both of them the same way because we're actually we're changing a different lever and that pushes up on both scissors uh, and, and pushes up on both control tubes pushes up on both pitch change levers pulls up on both pitch change links pitch horns and pitches the blades um, so if we're doing yaw, it, it's kind of a similar thing, and I'm not going to go through all the controls on this, but you've basically got um, control links, and this rod pushes in and out based on your rudder pedal position. Um, and this is the same thing. We're just changing the pitch of these rotor blades uh, essentially to counteract effects, either, either to turn the helicopter in a yaw um, plane, you know, side to side, or more likely to counter effects from other controls um, but essentially as you as you make can you know if you uh, let's say we change the collective so the RPM is pretty much um, set and and so if we change the collective um, it actually changes the torque on the motor because the RPMs set but we're changing the pitch in the blades so the motor has to work harder to to keep that RPM so the helicopter wants to turn side to side so then we have to adjust our um, yaw inputs, our rudder, or anti-torque is really what they call it here. And we have to adjust that. And because this is above the center of gravity, it starts putting, um, as we adjust the tail rotors, um, it, it puts a moment on the helicopter and it causes some, some roll. Um, and so then we have to adjust our cyclic to uh, counteract that roll and that reduces our lift a little bit and so we've got to pull collective a little bit and then we've got to adjust our tail a little bit and then our rotor a little bit but um, anyway you can see this is a wider view of roll inputs so it's actually really fascinating and and you know I think most people believe that um, you just spin up the um, you just spin up the the blades and make them go faster and faster and faster and that what's that's what gives us our lift but it's actually pitch it's actually collective pitch that uh, gives us our lift whoa he took that corner fast slow down buddy man people are working over here alright so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some pitch changes and I'm gonna start by pitching forward so it's a little bit glitchy because I've got it slowed way down, but you can see that I've pitched forward, the swash plate is pitched forward, so now as the blade rotates around, you can actually see that the, the controls change, and now the blade is, is flapping. The controls change as they go, as they go around. So we're going to, whoa. So we're going to try to look around this thing a little bit. You can I don't know why the blade does that. It should it should just go through the camera. DCS Eagle Dynamics fix that for me. Um, so you can see the, the the pitch change levers on top. That's probably for me that's the easiest part to see. They're just popping up and down. 
Alright, we seem relatively safe here. Let's do a sideways, uh, basically a roll cyclic. You can see the swash plate moves and everything else moves. Let's go the other way. Swash plate moves. Everything else moves. Let's go backwards. So we're pitching back. And now the blades are flapping down on the back. And as we move it around, that swash plate moves. Okay. Let's look back at this guy, and I'm going to start slowly adjusting the collective. We're at neutral cyclic, and as I adjust this collective, you can see the pitch change levers up on top are actually starting to come up slowly. And the blades are starting, they're both pitching up at the same amount, or the same rate. And they're both flapping up all the way around the arc so where the cyclic it flaps up in one part of the arc and flaps down opposite and see we're going to input some cyclic now too so now not only do we have collective we have the cyclic changing the pitch um, but as we as we do just the collective the helicopter starts getting lighter and you can see it, it's starting to move around a little bit because I've we have lift occurring all the way around the arc. All the way around the arc of the rotor blades we have we have lift and then um, and so the helicopter is getting lighter on its feet and, and changes are moving it more now. And eventually as you start to get lighter and this is not going to go well because I'm in an external view and in slow motion. As you get lighter the the helicopter will start to twist on its skids because it's getting light enough that um, its weight isn't holding it down to the ground and you'll actually have to give it some some rudder input to keep it straight. Alright folks, thanks for watching. That was the quick and simple-ish um, description of how helicopter flight controls work. I hope it made some sense. Ask me questions if it didn't. Um, and again, DCS is a great platform to learn this kind of stuff without leaving your home and your air conditioning and without risking life and limb. So, um, as always, happy flying and thank you for watching.